Classes can be broadly thought of as categories for objects. They can control visibility much like layers can, but they also have an intricate system of attributes they can apply to the objects within them. Classes are often considered what an object is, while layers mainly control the where. A list of classes within a document can be found under Tools, Organization, Classes, as well as under the Classes tab of the Navigation palette if you have a Design Series module. By default, in a new document, you have two classes, None and Dimension. None doesn't mean there is no class assigned to an object. It's simply the default class where new objects are automatically placed. Objects always exist on both a layer and within a class. When you add intelligent plugin objects, such as doors or windows, they will often automatically add their own class or sets of classes to a document. For instance, the glazing class primarily controls the look and visibility of glass panes in doors or windows, since often all the glass in a document is similar. Simple objects like rectangles, however, will automatically be assigned to the class that is currently active. The active class can be set near the top left of the drawing area in the Classes drop-down menu, as well as in the Organization dialog box or Navigation palette, again, if you have a Design Series module of Vectorworks. However, you can also create new classes manually and name them whatever you'd like, keeping in mind that no two classes can have the same name. You can create a new class from a number of locations. One of the most useful is when you have an object you want to class, but don't already have a class created for it. Select an object such as a rectangle, then in the Object Info palette in the Classes drop-down, click New Class and name it. Once you click OK, the class will be created and the object you had selected will be added to it, all in one smooth action. You can also create new classes in the Organization dialog box or the Navigation palette. Either one works the same way. In a document that is further along in its design phase, we can see that classes have been used to great effect. The visibility options for classes let you easily turn classes on or off, as well as gray them. Since in this document, all the furniture, doors, and entourage trees outside have been given their own classes, we can switch them all on and off with a single click to make it easier to focus on the part of the design we're currently interested in. The three visibility states for classes are visible, invisible, and gray. All three can be used in the navigation palette or in the organization dialog box. Their controls are the same. The navigation palette is simply more convenient. You may have noticed that some of the classes in these lists were indented and listed underneath other classes. This is known as hierarchical display. It allows you to place multiple classes within a group, which lets you change their visibility all at once without having to select each of them individually, as well as collapse them into a single line item in the class list. This is extremely important in documents with a complex class list. Class hierarchies are made by simply placing a dash within a class name. So a class named Furniture-Main and a class named Furniture-Exterior would show up like this. And we can simply change the visibility of the top class to alter the visibility of all its subclasses. Attributes of objects can also be altered via class as well. Here we have a very simple example of two circles and two squares. The circles residing in the circles class and the squares residing in the squares class. We can manually select any of the circles or squares and change their attributes via the attributes palette directly. However, what if I want all circles to always appear the same color? To do this, I can simply change the default attributes of the circles class under Tools, Organization, Classes. I'll select the circles class and click Edit. Here, I can assign fill and pen colors, styles, line thickness, markers, anything that can be controlled per object via the attributes palette as well as a few more advanced features like textiles and textures. For now, we'll stick to the object fill and pen to change them to yellow and blue. Click OK to both dialog boxes. You'll notice that the circle did not change. This is a common question and it's an easy fix. Edit the class again. Then on the top left of the Edit Class dialog, select the checkbox for Use at Creation. This option will force any objects placed into this class to automatically take on the class attributes assigned here. You can of course override this at any time, but this is how you enable it automatically. Click OK, and then you will see this prompt. This lets us decide if we want to reassign the class attributes to objects that were already in this class before we selected Use It Creation. In this case we do, 
so we'll click yes. Be careful of checking always do the selected action here, as you may not always want to change objects that are already in your drawing in a class. Now we see that our circles have taken on the new attributes we selected. Furthermore, if we create new objects with the circles class active, they will also automatically take on these new attributes without us having to do any additional work. For this reason, it's important to keep an eye on what class is active when you create new objects. Ideally, you'll set the active class first and then draw any new objects that you want in that class, but you can always select an existing object and change its class in the object info palette later. You can even select multiple objects and change their classes all at once. If you don't want every object within a class to take on its class attributes, you can disable use it creation in the class attributes. Then simply select one or more objects and in the attributes palette, choose the use class option for some or all of the various attribute settings. You can mix and match these settings as desired. Keep in mind that use class attribute settings are disabled by default, but you can also click the button at the bottom of the attributes palette and click make all attributes by class to set it as the default with no object selected. Some objects, like doors, have very intricate and complex systems of classes for their various components. These are often controlled by selecting the plugin object, then clicking Settings in the Object Info palette. Often, the pane you're looking for will simply be called Classes. From here, the level of control is increased, and you can select and create new classes for each and every part of the selected plugin object. If you find you've made too many classes, or you have two classes with objects that are similar enough that you feel you could combine the two into one class, simply go to the organization dialog box and select one of those two classes that contain your objects and click delete. Vectorworks will detect that you have objects within this class and ask if you want to select another class for them to reside in, or if you want to delete the contents of the class completely. Selecting a new class will reassign all objects within the deleted class to the selected class, then delete the now empty one. Classes are a great way of not only keeping drawing items organized, but accurately altering attributes and visibilities of your geometry quickly and easily.